Okay, I'm gonna do this video on Rush Flush Defense. Cause there was a Rec T90 played and then I think he thinks that he's not fast enough or something, but uh it's nice because this is way easier to do and it'll make the game way easier for Rush Flush Defense. And then I think maybe the problem isn't where he thinks it is, which I can relate to. And I think it's way easier than he's making it. One second, I've got to minimize this. Uh, just to this game, is this other guy goes rush flush. He does a good job scouting it. Actually, he really good scouting at the start. Look at that. Keep going everywhere. Um, and his base is pretty good because he only has to worry about this here. A lot of people would take this gold even and then go to this gold later. He's going to jump up on this gold first. You can kind of see why this gold is better though because they can come hit you with scouts or... Scout skirms like Springle sometimes do an early scout with three skirm deal. Um, pressure you before you have bloodlines and stuff. Some people do forward spears with scouts. And but if you take this back here, it's way safer, right? So he sees he's rushing this. He's clicking up. Stable with scouts. This is why Dark Age is so important because if you don't have enough food to get these scouts out in a timely manner, you can't clean this up in a timely manner. Right, but he does a good job pulling bills to clean this up. Bam, that's cleaned up. Everything's good. And he's pressuring this scout. You can also tell this other guy, he is, uh... He's good with archers and cav archers, so I can see why I like going rush flush. There's just, like, little things that Frank that like a 1700 would do different than Frank did, but I won't get too into it now. The gist of it is like he just, 1700 would have more units and be a little more effective with them. It's a better build. But for this level, he does it like insanely well. <laughs> so like, wouldn't be surprised if he caught me with it. I had like a really open map and he had a good map. That's what's always hard, you can't really screw up. But T90 does a good job scouting him. He scouts the ranges, he knows the flush is coming. Now you have to drop a, a range yourself, he already did that, but you have to make skirms from it. And a Viper defense is he'll go double range with skirms, uh, where a Sebdos defense he'll go like one range with skirms. It doesn't really matter, but generally everybody gets uh, about like eight skirms first, and then jumps to gold like later than they normally would. Uh, at a common time seems to be about 15 minutes, 15 seconds, anywhere around there to jump to gold. Uh, yeah. Basically, because if they, and like you can figure that stuff out yourself, like it's, it, it's not the biggest deal, right? The bigger deal is trying to keep track of his archers to make sure they don't pop up in your wood line, like five archers with fletching, and your wood line kind of sucks. And... Uh, seeing if the ranges are still garrisoned. And, uh, yeah, no, that's pretty much it. Just scouting. Hardcore scouting. Because this is annoying to deal with. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh. Get your skirms up. And then you can go later back into archers. Because if he if he's rush flushing, he's going to have his ranges up before you. And he's going to be on gold before you. So he's just going to have more archers. The skirms make faster than archers. So... So that's how you catch up there. Oh, and of course, Scrims counter archers, right? Then you can do a blacksmith, fletching, whatever. Also, plus one's pretty cool, especially the more Scrim heavy you are, because Scrims, like, actually their attack bonus isn't, like, super awesome versus archers. They just do such a good job tanking. And archers, like, you can see if they had fletching, they only do five attack. And I think Scrims' base defense is three. So if you get the other defense thing, like, it goes from, like, three attack to, like, two attack or something, right? Or five attack, it, two attack, five minus three, um, goes to two attack. But if you have armor, it goes five minus four to one attack, I think, is what happens. So, yeah, it ends up being super awesome. Boom, you see his archers, so that's good. You do, uh, this is like a major part of it too that you already have down. Like this is the harder part, right? Is scouting his stuff. Uh, the easier part is just going skirms and trying to catch him around your base or whatever. But you can see how many archers you have. Two, four, six, eight. If these were all skirms right now, you would easily clean this up. How do I take off fog? Uh, maybe not easily, but at least like you can start picking off the archers and then adding on archers yourself or going more skirms or whatever you want to do. 
Plus you have the scouts out. They do a good job tanking. You can micro around so that they're wasting arrow fire and you can hit them. Uh, let me just fast forward to the the one important part of this game. It's when he comes here. It's a good job, you know, like he, this is kind of a vulnerable area. Let's go for sight. One thing is I'd probably put, like a lot of people would just put an outpost here earlier or just patrol the scout is probably what I would do or a spear or something. Just cause like if the range gets picked off it kinda sucks. That's not a big deal though on like a, like just, I don't even know why I brought that up. It's so, such a small thing. Uh, let me go to the only part that matters. <laughs> so imagine these are all skirms, right? Some people will do like mass skirm defense first this, which is fine. Um, if these were all scrims, you can easily clean this up, and he would have to keep running away, right? And then you can try to do stuff like trapping him. But as it is, he has the hill, and just barely able to hold there. And that's going to be pretty much it. He does a good job countering here, and then uh, coming in with Cav Archer. And he has bloodlines on his Cav Archer, and you can't afford it because you're off wooden, and then off the farms and stuff. So, kind of just uh, domino effect. Um... Yeah, so it's way easier to go skirms. You can just like patrol, move in. That's the other thing is I would just patrol, move in, like with the skirms, and then unless he's like hardcore microing with runners, just let it do its thing. I think it just ends up being better than me hand microing it, and a lot of people hand microing it. Uh, that's another minor thing. That's pretty much it though. So yeah, easy to go skirms. Easier than that, but it's. Always easier, I think, to look at Rex where where it happens to other people. Uh, cause this game didn't really make sense until I like started. Like, it just takes so many games to watch to like know how to defend everything and do everything right. So I think it's easier if I just show two Rex Viper played. One is versus Chris. I know I'm looking right at the wreck I should open. It's counter drush. Here it is. Second one. Um. Yeah, so you can get the gist of it. The build order is not that big of a deal. You already know the build. It's pretty much like scout build, right? And I think about it more in blocks. Like you just want to get the eight skirms up, right? Because then it kind of counters their archers. Then you just don't want to take damage from the archers, right? So, and then you can go back into archers yourself, or just go like archer, skirm, or uh, skirm, scout heavy with like all the armor stuff. That was the other thing in the last game, the guy's gold was kind of vulnerable, and you could like start thinking about pressuring that because his gold is his lifeline, and skirms just tank so well against towers and stuff. So, you can think about that, but it's a little more risky. Not really my style so much. Something you can consider. Also, because like the more vulnerable their gold is, like especially if it's forward, the more uh, it helps to hit it because you have skirms and the like the gold is their lifeline. I don't know if I already said that. I say it all the time, but yeah, without gold, because they're going archers, they don't have a stable for scouts, and they don't really want to go skirms or else it'll kill their castle time. Oh, yeah. Anyway, Chris goes drush here. I think he killed a. Oh wait, this isn't the right rack. I'm awful. Which one is it? Counter Drush. Oh, here it is. Drush Flush SC2. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, let me try to like go through the main points in this because we already know Chris is gonna go Drush Flush. Viper loses the build of the Drush, so it's not like it sucks, but hey, he's human. It's funny because in the next wreck I'll go over, he'll also lose a vill. You can see how bad his map is, his wood's bad. At least he has a bat, gold, and berries. But he'll want to keep this hill. And then also where he puts the outpost to try to not take damage. Big thing is, he just goes scouts. And two range into skirm. And so that's the only thing that changes is he'll go into skirm first is like that buffer period instead of going straight into archers because you kind of need something out. That's pretty much it. 
That's kind of cool. He saw two wolves here, so he can kind of see if Chris is coming that way too. Okay, he sees the draw. She cleans it up, drops a range. I, he, I don't know if he saw Chris on gold, or if he knew that Chris just likes to go drush flush. But you can see Chris has spears out. He's nice and safe, and Viper sees the range, so he knows it's drush flush. It could be like. Like, skirms here just wouldn't work, so like, Drush into just making skirms would be like weird because they have scouts out already, right? Uh, but he is going to go scout that way and it's walled. So you can see two range, skirms, three, four, five, and then an archer, jump on gold. That ended up being 15.30 ish when it was done, so maybe he started around 15 minute mark. Couple more skirms, let's fast forward. He has him here because it protects his wooden line. Later he'll put an outpost here so he doesn't sneak stuff over. Oh, there he goes. Because you start worrying about it, right? If they sneak stuff in your gold, it kind of is really bad. Because not only is he in your gold and idling that, but then he circles around this way into your wood and then back to your gold and back and forth. And then it's not fun. Yep, trolling here. How many scrims is that? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Plus however many archers. Catches them while there, kills the unit, and yeah, did decent amount of damage there. I might just stop it pretty soon because that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, take a look at Eco. 15 farms, 16. Uh, 9 on gold, 12 on wood, whatever. You can see how it's just pretty similar to scout build, right? And he cut scouts after, like, he got his four out. So he sees what's up. He clicks up the castle around 2130, pressuring outside Chris's base. And he sees how many range units he has, too. Like, I think that's something that just comes with time and from doing a drush flush yourself. So, like, Chris can't be sneaking five arches around a viper right now because he has so much stuff up here right now. I'll fast forward it really quick. Uh, a lot of people, like, I love how Chris is so greedy, he'll put his farms around the mill, but like Viper and Jordan and Sabdos, they would put their farms around the TC back here just to be safer. Sacrificing efficiency for safety. Let's see Viper's castle first. Usually they'll be castle about the same time. There goes Chris, he's castle. He walled though, so, I don't know. But you can see Viper's just pressuring him. And it goes into kind of a standard game, right? Uh, I'll just fast forward it. <laughs> Chris needs a mangonel. My bridge is really good, and he has Chris kind of pinned in his base. Microing back, stalling for time, keeping this hill with Cav Archer. Good micro there. He has bloodlines on Cav Archer, nice. Going University Ballistics and skipping the mangonel and throwing up a TC, because he knows he has enough to deal with this. Chris going forward to mangonel with range units. What he wants to do is try to add on Cav Archer, but he doesn't have a stable for um, Bloodlines. So, Drush Flush is kind of cool because you skip the scout portion of the game. And really, what you're you're doing is like you're trying to beat them to like the range, like Expo portion of the game. Because really everyone just goes Expo, it's so powerful. And you can get out more Expo than if you go Scout Flush, or Scout Archer. And you have the added benefit where if you sneak five to eight archers in their wood line, like you can just end the game. Pretty much. Uh, Viper on three TC. Let's fast forward it. Viper just holding because he just has to not take too much damage because he had his TCs up before Chris, I think. And he has bloodlines and whatever. Chris is trying to. I actually can't see their veil counts, but 127 popped and 112 popped, so. Let's fast forward it. We're already pretty much into the normal game. So, they on ranges. I actually thought it was over way earlier. Like, in, I didn't think it got to mid castle even. Just sneaking around here. I like that he did the mangonels for like, I think defense at first, and then now he's just gonna try to make use of him by pressuring Viper. Over here by his main gold. But it's in the back, so it's kinda he has to go all the way around the edge of the map to get to it. Now he's kinda caught in a weird spot. Yeah, that's 
that's going to be it. Got caught in a weird spot. Viper waited for a couple more rounds of Cav Archer and cleaned that up. Jumping on stone. Ooh, good harass over here by Chris. Wow, good counter harass by Viper. Viper clicks up about 40 minute imp. Way up in score, 128 popped to 160 in favor of Viper. But so Chris is going to have to somehow do damage to Viper. I think a lot of damage. Castle for defense. Chris played it pretty well too though, I'm surprised. You can see it more now than when I first watched the game. Ooh, Viper missed the... Oh, now he got the cap archer, so that was pretty big. A lot of cap rams. Chris trying to counter Viper. Viper putting up a castle on the hill. Oh, weird. Oh, Seed Ram already done. Wow. That was really good timing on the Seed Ram. And Chris is probably going to GG it. Wow, just such a good eco. Seed Ram and Heavy Cab Archer. And, oh, he's going to hero save the castle. Viper has got this hill locked down, though, and it's the hill in the middle of the map, kind of. Parking harassed by Chris. Man, I got started. I thought this game was so short, and then now I just got started watching this super long game. And look at Chris's mini map Viper harassing all over with uh, Hussar. And GG called. Nice. That's funny because it's kind of the opposite. Usually, when you hit Imp, you start harassing with the Hussar, or whatever, first, and then do that big siege push like up the middle because you need time to get the sea jam and stuff out, but Viper did it like backwards. It's always fun to see something a little different. Um, one more game though, let me see how I'm doing on time. Oh, I'm only 17 minutes in, and this next game I think is short. Aphrodite, okay, there we go. Viper streamed this too, and it's November 19th of 2014, so if you want to go through his Twitch stream and try to find Exact game. Uh, again, Drush Flush. Kind of take a look at their maps here. Viper has his gold kind of on the side on the bottom of the hill, so it's super important not to lose this part here because everything will die super fast, and after you lose it, you can't get it back because he's on a hill, right? This is on the bottom of a hill. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. This is, on the bo <laughs> this is even on the bottom of a hill. Everything's on the bottom of a hill. I don't know that his Viper went Drush himself. Same thing kind of applies though. Uh, Aphrodite on uh, gold. Wow, Viper just super won that one. Up on 29 pop. Grabbing a deer. Four on gold himself. Double range. And then he can afford the blacksmith now too. Pretty nice. But yeah, you can see he's doing skirm. And then he scouted with his militia that his gold saturation. So he scouted first with the scout that he was drushing. And you can see he scouted with his militia that he had left that he's going uh, range with six on gold or whatever. So here's the five archers sneaking around. Looks like Viper has town watch. So he has town watch. And he already has the outpost up here because he doesn't want stuff to sneak through over this way. Trying to zone off the archers. They already have fletching. Viper has fletching. So he has the skirms out to deal with those archers. Six skirms going back into archers himself. And since he rushed flushed, he can uh, afford the archers a little sooner because he jumped my gold a little earlier and whatever. Pressuring with the skirm. There's archers. Oh, and plus one armor. I've done these videos a few times, so I think I've already explained why the skirms, they don't like do that much attack bonus versus the archers. Oh wow, these archers sneaking around. This is why this is so annoying. Viper to put an outpost up here too, just to kind of keep everything locked down so you can see everything, doesn't get cut off guard. Here's that hill. Oh wow, even a lot of bills dying there. Oh, maybe only lost one. That one stayed alive. Oh yeah, but they tank so well. They, they just mostly tank really well, so four... Uh, Armor versus five attack. I think they only will do one damage. Five minus four is one. 
So, armor upgrade's pretty fun. Um, Viper trying to counter his gold himself, and Aphrodite towering the gold because he doesn't want to lose that. Uh, let's see here. I wonder if he put up any outposts or anything. So he doesn't have town watch, and this is what would scare me here. I feel like, a, oh, you know what? He's putting an outpost here, right as I say that. And I would be kind of afraid of this, like not having any presence over this way. Anyway, let's go back to Viper. So when he streamed this game, I don't think he said too much about it right now. And you can see it's always important to know where his army is. This is everything. Like, you already know like what you kind of want to do. You want to get out your skirms, archers, whatever, click up. Everything's fun. That, like, that's the only next part is like, um, as he clicks up to castle 22 minute mark. He had about 15, 16 farms before, and then he'll, he'll want to like trickle down to only. Uh, well, he doesn't have a stable for bloodlines, so what's he at now? Like 10 or 11 farms? 11 farms. Doesn't want to be too food heavy, rather have the golden wood. Oh, putting your units on a good part of the map and like total efficiency with the units, right? On stream, I think he said something like, well, he kind of has to go for it because he's ended up being up sooner. And you can see, like, he walled this part off because it was kind of getting close there. It just makes zones off this part of the map. And he'd have to go around this way, but by the time he did that, Viper would already have, like, probably an archer uh, expo upgrade or bodkin or something. So he has to go for it right now. So Aphrodite does a good job knowing that. Oh, plus he made the scouts with plus one armor. That's why he has to go for it. Viper Towers is gold. So he just has to not take too many losses here. We'll go to the bills. Viper's at 35 bills to Aphrodite 47. So you can kind of see what the game plan is for Aphrodite. Uh, as Viper does University Ballistics. He's got a lot of range units. He just wants to delay until he gets more stuff up and doesn't want this to hurt his eco now. Because, ooh, good job delaying that University. Because he's so far up in bills because he clicked up later. And they were all working that whole time, so he should be up uh, resources. Oh, uh, let's see here. Another range coming down. Cover turn hill, running back. They don't have bloodlines. Just a lot of units. Ooh, scouts plus one, plus one. <laughs> And Aphrodite ends up going Knights. So, okay, we got this far. He's doing TC for defense. As well as just to get ahead in Eco, because he can't really pressure it while Viper has tech advantage. He's going to try, I guess. That's the theory of it, anyway. <laughs> He's really going for it now. Wow. Good timing on the CC. This is all safe. So Viper is going the eco route. He's going the like I just kind of want to get ahead in eco, kind of, so I don't have to do too much damage to you, and um, make it so Aphrodite has to do damage to Viper. Or if you skip the TC, all of a sudden now you have to do more damage than you otherwise would have to him. Good harass here though. Putting down, okay, now they're even in bills, and by press the second TC upright. Uh, Aphrodite is almost castle. He ends up going knight, which makes sense because he already has plus one, plus one for his scouts. And what Viper said on stream is he wanted to skip bloodlines first, and he already has ballistics. Um, he's gonna skip bloodlines to get husbandry, which I thought was weird when I watched it, like way back. Uh, now I kind of get it, because you're just looking to hit and run the knights. If they have husbandry, like, you can't fight anyway. But if you both have husbandry, alright, it evens out again. And you're not really, like, you're always looking to hit and run. You're not going to sit there taking shots from them anyway. So, like, the bold lines doesn't really matter that much after you have ballistics. And then get, obviously you're going to get bloodlines next. So it's, like, not that big of a deal. So I kind of get it now. Thumb running ballistics. Uh, husbandry. Pretty safe, gonna throw down a third TC. So like someone else too would be like, oh, you can add on 
maybe more ranges, maybe a siege workshop, whatever, something to do damage. Or you can just, what's way easier, just keep these units, you have the hill, throw down a TC here, work on your eco a little bit, and then uh, just take, harass them a little bit. Raid them a little, and call it good. It's like, I feel like it's way safer. But yeah, let's fast forward. Aphrodite calls the GG. Uh, Viper's picking them apart with the Cav Archer. Um, actually missed the Knights. I swore he made Knights this game. Oh, there they are. I found them. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's a pretty cool game. Viper played it on stream and was commentating it. I had no idea what was going on because I started playing just like five months before this game was played. Um, yeah, that's the gist of it. Hopefully that helps make the Drush flush defense. Makes the Drush flush defense make more sense. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, and that's pretty much it. Now, it's kind of like, I don't know if you've seen the map bit I've done where you just make your base safe in the custom scenario thing, but I feel like that helps a lot for this too, just kind of seeing like where's the best spot to put outposts or keep everything really safe just in case some archers sneak around where like they can't sneak now because you're going to see it coming. Because uh, his base is pretty split up. He had his wood up here, wood over here, and gold here, and it's on the bottom of a hill, so really bad base, but... He put an outpost here with Town Watch and an outpost here. And he just did a good job of tracking down his units, which is easier said than done. Um, but yeah, after you get the build down, that's pretty easy, I feel like, for this level. And then all that matters is is just like catching their units on the map and also making good use of your units yourself. Viper did a good job catching the units, and then he even poked around on the gold. But Aphrodite did a, did a good job defending. Someone else who wouldn't have units on the gold, though, that would be like enough for Viper just to get pretty far ahead just to win it there, right? Because not only would he kill Vils on the gold, but he would uh, delay his gold. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, good luck. See ya.